Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're looking at seismicity, a baby planet getting beaten down, and the first ever confirmation of the last disaster cycle from the Americas. But we're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find it was another calm day. We have big sunspots, but they're not flaring. We have the incoming coronal hole. We'll be facing Earth this weekend. Minor pops and surges around the northern active regions, but they are running out of time to impact the Earth. We have also seen a somewhat unexpected endurance to the coronal hole stream of enhanced solar wind. We are still well above ambient quiet range. The southern opening is still impacting Earth and reverberating the solar storm conditions to minor levels happened again last night. We expect to have further amplification early next week due to the incoming coronal hole. That one is squarely crossing the equator coming in from the left. No chance it misses us. And while NOAA hasn't made any forecast for the event so far, I would guess at least minor storm conditions are likely when that stream arrives. The sunspots are growing. The northern spots are pretty big, but they only got there after having crossed the center line of heliographic longitude, and they're turning towards the limb. While the equatorial spots face Earth today, they would still need to grow a bit more in order to have flaring events that would be relevant. The top quake of the last several months shook the northern Pacific yesterday, a 7.3 south of Sandpoint, Alaska. They noted a peak wave of about 2.4 inches, which is about 10% of the average wave size there in normal times and nowhere near the high tide surge. Minor damage was noted from the event, nothing major. So we go to the first science story. They found a Jupiter-sized baby planet orbiting very close to its star, and it's taking a whooping from the X-ray flares of that star. Its atmosphere is being stripped, and they believe that eventually it's going to erode the planet down to a barren, rocky core. Lastly, folks, in the article front, as of 2020, there was only the indication of the 6,000 years ago disaster cycle event in the data. It didn't get officially declared as a magnetic pole shift until 2021. As of this week, we had confirmation from Korea, China, Russia, and Sweden, and today, we've got confirmation from Colombia. The first such confirmation from the Americas using ancient pottery, and they were able to tell that about 6,000 years ago the magnetic field was changing very rapidly, described as extreme variation. Three continents makes it as solid as any other, and the full cycle is visible, traceable, trackable. And not only are we due for it once again, but the magnetic poles are shifting, the magnetic field is weakening, the exact signals you'd expect, and those are speeding up faster and faster. My new book on this topic starts pre-order in the next few days. It's got space weather, debunking mainstream climate propaganda, proving that it's actually the sun, and of course, everything about Earth's disaster cycle. Eyes open for that in the coming days, and our monthly issue of Observer Review comes out this afternoon. Tons of outstanding articles this month. You get access to every issue we've ever put out the moment you sign up. It's the only regular publication dedicated to the sun, solar forcing, and the magnetic pole shift. I will be out at the ranch this weekend for the kids' rocket launch and the permaculture class. A lot is happening at Observer Ranch the rest of the year, events almost weekly. Next Pole Shift Conference is August 23rd. may want to make it out for that one. Check out the website to see the full list of events for the rest of the year and book your stay, ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.